Hello viewers, Super GT here. We continue along the road to Gran Turismo 7. We are getting very, very close indeed now, everyone. Now, last week we did a race in Japan. This week we also do a race in Japan, but this one at Suzuka in a Group 3 car. This one, in fact, well, it's actually a GT1 car, but it's in this class. It's the Aston Martin DBR9. Let's see what we can do. We join the lobby and everyone is using the same car. Now... This basically makes it a spec championship, if you like, because it's meant to be a tuning championship, but everyone's going with the same car. Qualified 10th on my first attempt. Getting away from the grid, fairly okay. A couple of uh, shadow realm entries for some people there on the first corner. Gained two positions. At the end of the first lap, I almost entered the realm myself and just managed to keep control of the car and continue along the road to ideally the finish line now went around the outside of this guy because there was a mix of tire compounds you have to use all three tire compounds for this race but none of it mattered anyway because a few laps later i crashed and died and this gave me the chance one hour later to join back into the road to gt7 in race number two hopefully this one would go a little bit better and i wouldn't meet my fate in the barrier Okay, so let's take a look at my qualifying lap. Now, coming into turn one, you'll notice there's not really anyone immediately in front of me. No slipstream to make the most of here. But we are towing along a Spaniard. So ideally, I need to try and pull away. Let's see what we can do through the, through the S's. Now, typically, the DBR9 is a bit of a stiff car. It doesn't really like fast-flowing corners like this. So once again, we've gone with the tuning setup of AMS Dude, who's doing, who's doing the business in the tuning garage. And it looks like everyone else has followed suit because, well, everyone's driving the same car. And it felt like everyone was using the same tune as well. So it's quite, it's quite funny that you have an open choice of cars and you can tune the cars as well. But pretty much everyone has gone for exactly the same car and tune. And uh, I think this open championship has had exactly the opposite effect of what it was meant to do but there you go um winding our way round to spoon flipping that first apex quite nicely powering out to the outside back for apex number two are we going to meet it vaguely on the power onto the back straight we have said goodbye to the spaniard who was in our toe at the start of the lap through 130r through there flat out back to the left look for the 150 board there it is on the brakes into the final corner carry the speed in abuse the second curb as you can over the curb on the exit keep it to the right for a slightly shorter run to the finish line it's a 154.6 not the best lap um but it was it was slightly slower than my first race ultimately it was good enough for ninth place in this lobby so we go into the race start 16 laps around suzuka you have to use all three tires Pretty much everyone in the Aston Martin in this race. I think one guy is in a Toyota, funnily enough. And the five lights are on for an awfully long time before eventually going out. Away from the line we go. Two cars very slow. One coming across the track. We just managed to escape. Moving to the inside. Gaining two positions, although we have the Frenchman on our left-hand side here. He's going to go around the outside. There's not much I could really do about that. We're going to gain two. Lose one. And ultimately, well, gain one position. So I suppose that's better than nothing. So we're going to settle into this race. We started with the hard tyre. Now, as I said, you have to use all three compounds. We're going to get the worst tyre out of the way early. And my main reasoning for that is, at the start, I can ideally, hopefully, try and get into the toe of some of the faster cars who are on better tyres. And then, if I slow down some other people, well... I slow down some other people. I'm ruining their race whilst not really ruining my own one. But that's just part of tyre strategy, really. Uh, we've got a penalty up there in sixth place for the Frenchman. In um, I was going to say in the Aston Martin, but everyone's in the Aston Martin, so that's not really a good way to describe the cars in this race. Into the hairpin. We are beginning to edge away from that group behind. You can see that they're fighting a little bit too much with each other. That's good news. We can just edge away. Edge away. Let's take a look at the start again. And it was Calster in third place. He went a little bit too early. Got caught up by how long those red lights were on for. 
and you can see he goes from third, loses so many positions as a result of that, down to 16th at one point there, and that's pretty much ruined his race. Just behind him here, the German driver, also doing the same sort of thing, just going a little bit too early, having to back out. He was the one who went across the track, and he loses about four positions there. Now, the, the biggest gainer out of all of this was the Frenchman here. Started 11th, and just didn't really have to break his stride, and kept up really good momentum, got through the pack. You see there, there's me on the right-hand side. And he just goes into the space that it was available to him, and he used it. And he went around the outside of the German here, and moves up into 6th. 11th to 6th, very good start for him. Um, but back to the race. Lap 1 of 16, uh, sitting here in 8th position. The guy in 6th uh, place there, that's the Frenchman we were just watching on board at the start. He's going to be serving a 0.5 second penalty here. So coming up to the penalty zone, which is just at the beginning of the straight. I don't think I'm going to be close enough to gain on him, but um, the German will be. My main consideration at this point here really is just to have a good, solid, clean couple of laps. It's always in these types of races where everyone's very, uh, very evenly matched and you have to use all of the tyres. This is where you just don't want incidents. You just really want to drive a very clean race without too much fighting. And those who do fight will lose out overall. Okay, so a couple of cars go in there. Well, one car goes in. I could have followed him in, but I think I want to do at least two laps on the hards rather than just the one. And that would just make my life a little bit easier towards the end of the race when I go on to the mediums and the softs. So through turn one and turn two, just keeping it nice and close. You see there, looking back, the group behind, uh, just easily clear of them now, a couple of seconds back. And this is where things could have really unraveled. It is so easy to make a big mistake on that astro turf, get pulled wide, get pulled off the circuit. You don't really want that. It sounds enticing, but trust me, you don't want it to happen. And we just avoid carnage. Oh my goodness, the Spaniard there. He's uh, He's got pulled wide, it looks like. And uh, couldn't resist. We're going to try and pull away here from him. And just try and get out of the slipstream range. Into the pit lane, though. We're not going to do that. We're going to go into the pit lane and swap over from the hard tyre onto the mediums. And we're going to lose a position here to the Greek driver. I think he's... That was an undercut he must have pulled off. I think he may well have pitted at the end of the first... Or he must have pitted at the end of the first lap. Or a nice little undercut there. And this is where... This was an interesting decision here from NRC Steve. To go to the left-hand side going into the Degners, you're never really going to gain anything there. He gets shoved wide. Loses his momentum. I'm going to go up the inside. And gain a position. I was kind of curious as to why he tried that around the outside. You're never going to be able to go around the outside of Degner 1. And unless you're overtaking a shopping trolley or something, but don't think there are any shopping trolleys in this race, from what I've seen. Okay, so we move up into 13th, and as I kind of hinted at earlier, I was kind of keen to just work together to gain time. So of course you're gaining, uh, sorry, of course you're racing against the people immediately around you, but you're also racing people who are at other points of the circuit because they may not have pitted yet, they're on different tyres. So things all seem to come together at the end of the race. Therefore, you don't want to fight too much now. So let's see what he does. Is he going to work with me? Yes, he is. He's not going to go for the pass. He could have got that pass here into 130R. But I think we would have both lost a bit of time. Because that's not really the best place to do it. In terms of time loss, at least. Through the final chicane. End of lap number three. Nothing really too bad to report so far. I think the race has gone fairly well. Sat here in 12th. Yes, we have lost positions, but we have done our pit stop, our first pit stop at least. Steve is going to go through here. I did sense that he was slightly quicker than me, judging by the first couple of laps and by how easily he kept up with me on that lap. I thought, okay, if he's going to go for it, I'm not going to fight him. I'm going to tuck in the slipstream. I've probably got more to gain by just tucking into the slipstream of a slightly faster driver and then just driving at his pace. And um, I felt like, again, early stage of the race, let's not overcomplicate things and make it too hard for each other. Uh, so let's just try and tuck into the slipstream and gain back onto the Greek driver. Now, this was an interesting moment because we're catching up here to the guy in 10th who's in the Toyota FT1, which I found a very curious choice for this circuit. And fair play for him, 
for trying something different, but I don't think it was really ever going to work here, as that car just does not quite have the straight line speed. I'm sure he would have worked on a tune, but uh, he gets easily displaced by the three of us here. And now myself and Steve, the two Steves trying to fight against the Greek driver here. Greek driver quite intent on going very defensive, and this is really frustrating as a driver when you're just trying to uh, gain time. So all the time we're fighting here, we are losing time. And this could and probably will mean uh, we're going to uh, we're going to be in a worse off position later on in the race. Let's see what happens here down the main straight. End of lap five on to lap number six. Again, he's going he's gonna to go defensive. I mean, he's well within his rights, but he's actually probably doing himself more harm than good at this point. Uh, Steve backs out. Probably the most sensible decision there. Um, trying that one around the outside is not going to work. And I mean, he kind of proved that earlier at Degna 1. You try it around the outside in certain corners and you are just going to end up on the grass or in the barrier or worse. Now, he managed to find an opening here. It just goes into the gap, kind of prizes it open and gets through. So I'm seeing that behind. I'm thinking, OK, I need to get past this guy as quick as possible. I don't know what tyres he's on. I don't know if he's on the medium like me but just isn't driving them very well or if he's on the hard because he certainly seems to be off the pace he is defending as well and you can see already how far steve has got away he's probably gained a second already since getting past and therefore i really need to get past this guy without uh, too much time loss into the hairpin am i close enough not really i do close right up to the back of him it's not going to be close enough for an overtake how about into spoon bit of a straight here so on the exit of the hairpin you've got quite a lot of long straights therefore a couple of very good overtaking opportunities we're going to take advantage of the first one here into spoon pull, uh, pull over to the left later on the brakes up the inside hit the curb and we get 11th position now i'm not sure what was going on here because the gap at, at this moment is about 1.2 up to steve and then he kind of just backs off slightly and the gap comes down to about seven tenths. Now, I'm not sure if he was just trying to be nice to me and just give me the slip, but either way, it was extremely useful. They just dropped back to give me that slipstream. And um, that would certainly help my race from here on in. So on the exit of the final chicane, on to lap number seven, you can see here, well within the slipstream now, courtesy of Steve slowing down slightly. And this is a really important moment of the race. We did a couple more very quick laps there consistent and fast and you can see uh, three guys coming out of the pit lane together how many of these are we going to be able to get past one and the second one very very close indeed wasn't quite able to get uh, get ahead of third driver there and that that just shows you maybe if i didn't lose a second or so fighting against the uh, the Greek driver, I would have been in sixth position right now instead of instead of seventh. So it's these really fine differences that do matter. And I was slightly on the back foot on this lap because those cars that came out, it looks like they were on the medium tyre. We, we're, we're even on pace uh, pretty much. I'm perhaps a little bit slower because of having worn tyres. They they came out on fresh tyres, of course. I'm, I'm doing my best here to keep up, keeping the slipstream, and I'm doing that. So it's okay at the moment. No need to panic just yet. Uh, so we are under pressure. You can see him just there. Very, very close indeed. I'm just doing my best here. Keep within the toe. Don't lose the slipstream of the car in front. And we should be okay. And, uh, you know, just churning out the laps. That's all we've got to do at this point. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too uh, silly. We could go over and, we, you know, we could try for an overtake. But then we're probably just going to lose a second doing it. And then maybe could lose, end up losing a position or two later because of other cars on the track elsewhere so we'll see how this one pans out just going to try and keep as close as we can for the next couple of laps and then we're going to come in in this lap maybe next lap to go onto the soft tyre where at that point we will be on the best tyre with low fuel until the end of the race and that's a very good scenario to be in now I was going to just uh, whip this one forward a little bit here because I was having difficulty into 130R. You can see how big the, the rear wing of the Aston Martin is. So as you're coming into the 130R here, it's really hard to get a sighter off the corner because the wing is just so damn big. Now, I'm not sure what that guy was uh, looking at. The Spaniard goes for a, an almighty lunge into the final corner and doesn't quite pull it off. 
didn't really matter anyway. He didn't need to pull that uh, her move off anyway because we came into the pit lane five seconds later. Go onto the soft tyre. So he's only just sent himself into the Shadow Realm for no reason. So let's take a look at the situation here. We're sat in ninth on lap number 10. So seven laps, including this one, to go. A bit of a gap to the guys behind. This was a very weird little moment here. So you see the Frenchman up there in seventh. And through this section here, he just begins driving very slowly. And that's, it was just very weird behavior. I didn't really know why he was doing that. Perhaps controller disconnected and he was in auto drive or something. It just seemed very strange. I wasn't quite sure exactly what was going on. And um, I'm going to try and get past him here. Uh, but it was just a bit bit weird behavior. And I was a bit suspect at this point. Just trying to make sure that get past him as quickly as possible and not lose too much time if he wanted to slow down. So as we come through here, uh, the space opens up on the left, so I look for it, and all of a sudden he kind of just forgets how to brake and goes flying straight on to have a rendezvous with Barry R. And um, yeah, fantastic stuff there. I mean, just great content really, isn't it? As we cross the line, we are now in seventh position, courtesy of that. And here... Um, the Z-Fix driver is just going to defend slightly, just hold off his position. But okay, I mean, we're still six laps away from the end. I didn't want to fight too much here. I was going for the very, the very, very diplomatic slash boring approach of just playing it very, very safe indeed. But after seeing all of the crashes involved in this race, including my own crash in the first race, I think it was fair to say that sometimes playing it safe is actually the good option it's the right option and you know if i had gone for a move you know i could be in the barrier right now who knows okay this is lap number 12 onto the back straight and you see the driver behind he did manage to get into the slipstream a couple of times very very close indeed i think for the most part he wasn't quite able to get as close as he would have liked and he was always on the fringes of the slipstream he was never really that close to me so i never really had to worry you know too much about the driver in eighth there. But I was conscious that there was two or three drivers within a few seconds behind so that if anything happened, we would lose a few positions. Now this is N NRC Steve, up in fifth place. He's driving his own race, money his own uh, business. And all of a sudden, yes, a spoon corner happens and he's suddenly off into the wall. And that just shows you, this race was actually very difficult. I mean, this car was quite tricky to drive the tune was good, but you just had to drive on a bit of a knife edge a lot of the time for it to be quick. And therefore, again, another reason to kind of drive it quite safely rather than risking silly moves. But yeah, NRC Steve there just um, he helped us out early in the race. And unfortunately for him, um, having yet another rendezvous with Barry R. Barry R, a very popular man today. Now here, looking for this move, I... <laughs> I could have perhaps put my nose down the inside. It would have been one of those where it's my nose is maybe only 25% alongside and it's kind of a dodgy move. I was very conscious now, as you can see behind, that Zfix Bandit was extremely close. And if I made the wrong move, I could have easily lose a, uh, lost a position instead of gained one. So now I'm in the Zfix Driver sandwich. I was kind of conscious of that, that you know, I was surrounded by two members of the same team. They... I don't know, maybe on uh, chat together, I don't know. But I really just had to make sure that I kept my call, didn't make any stupid decisions, and continued to be boring and playing it safe. Up towards the hairpin for the 15th time, only one more time, we're nearly on the final lap. You see, very close. And now, this is my time to strike, I think. Uh, we're late enough into the race that we can actually really fight and not have to worry about time loss therefore if an opportunity opens up we are going to go for this move with just over a lap left to go into 130r lap 15 penultimate lap i don't really get the run through there that i would have liked you see him he just edges away and that puts me too far back into the braking zone for the chicane can we get a good exit here he takes it a little bit better so through the corners that matter i'm just not quite quick enough i'm not quite where i need to be and the gap just opens up i'm not going to be close enough here into turn number one on the final lap that we are now on 
And uh, we're going to have to wait for this opportunity. There's maybe four or five uh, chances for an overtake here. Um, so Bandit just, just waiting here in... Well, in hope, really, that I go for some stupid move and it doesn't come off. And I'm always thinking, you know, what does the driver behind want me to do? And they probably want me just to start fighting and go for stupid moves. That's what they want me to do, or just to crash. And therefore, I'm going to try not to do that. In fact, there's three drivers, as we had a brief look behind. There's three drivers very close. And uh, any move that we do does have to come off. If we get it wrong, we could lose three positions. We don't want to do that, of course. We, we've got a good run here. Could this be a move into the hairpin? We're going to try it and go for it. Doesn't quite come off. You see how close that was. And any later on the brakes, I would have been into the back of him, potentially losing sixth place. Okay, winding round to Spoon. I made a move here earlier in the race. Is it, is it possible here? No, we're not quite close enough. He was getting good traction and good exits. Uh, better than me was this driver in front. I wasn't quite able to keep up with him. Out of Spoon. Again, he gets a good exit and I'm not quite close enough. He just opens up maybe a car length on the exits of the corners and by the time I get the slipstream we're a little bit too far back 2% of fuel left we should be able to make it to the end through 130R can we get through here we are close enough I'm going to go for this move if he doesn't block it he does block it we're going to go, have to go to the outside Bandit behind goes for it sees the opening it's not quite going to pay off for him and he's going to get overtaken on the final corner by the Italian who's actually very close indeed as we cross the line it was super close we didn't change position. We didn't gain. We didn't lose. Ultimately, come home to finish in sixth. Even though, yes, I probably could have gone for fifth at some point, I felt as though, you know what, with the risk that was involved in that race and how many people crashed and the fact that I crashed in the first race, I was quite happy. You know, I didn't make a mistake and just brought it home for a decent result. 278 points pretty much matches my result in the first round. Next week, things are about to get extremely chaotic i say next week it's actually this week it's a kart race around red bull ring short circuit so that is going to be utter carnage and i can't wait for it and the road to dt7 will continue we get very close to the release date indeed now and yeah i do hope you enjoyed this one thank you so much for watching i shall catch you next time goodbye